of guests. It's now time for members' statements. The member from Chatham, Chatham Kent, Essex. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I'm incredibly honored to say that Chatham Kent has made the top 10 of the Kraft Hockeyville 2015 competition. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Hockey has a rich history throughout this country, and it brings the entire communities together to celebrate the game we all love. In Chatham, that gathering place is at the Chatham Memorial Arena. First built in 1949 on the grounds of a training area used by the Canadian forces during World War II, the Chatham Memorial Arena is the oldest arena in the community, yet it has had the fewest upgrades. It's been the home to the Chatham Senior Maroons who won the Allen Cup back in 1960. And yes, Speaker, I do remember that. And also the Chatham Junior Maroons who won the Sutherland Cup uh, for Junior B Hockey in 1999. <clears throat> I actually gave that team a motivational speak when they were, speech when they were down three games to nothing against Leamington, also in my writing, and they came back to not only win that series, but the league championship, and then they went on to win the Sutherland Cup. Had to be the speech. Our area manager, Brian Bennett, has been part of the arena since the 60s. He devotes himself to the arena and the community, and he could use some help. The roof needs some work, the bathrooms need upgrades, and I'm sure that hockey players uh, would love to see some larger dressing rooms. The same hard benches that were installed in 1949 remain as seating today. The arena offers a rustic and some might even say a rough atmosphere. The winner of the contest will receive $100,000 in arena upgrades and host an NHL preseason. So I encourage every member of the legislature to get out and vote, especially for Chatham Kent. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Last week was Co-op Week in Canada, and to celebrate the occasion, two Ontario students were honoured as National Co-op Students of the Year, Andrew Andrade from the University of Waterloo and Raman Ala Khan from Fanshawe College, which I am proud to say is located in my home community of London. Andrew Andrade is a third-year engineering student from Mississauga. During an entrepreneurial co-op work term at the University of Waterloo, he not only co-founded his own startup, Petro predict, but he also hired and supervised four other co-op students to assist with his software business. Raman Ula Khan is an international student studying business marketing at Fanshawe College, who has completed three co-op work terms and praises the opportunities that cooperative education provides. Speaker, Raman is exactly the kind of immigrant we need in London and in Ontario. I urge the Liberal government to advocate strongly to ensure that the new express entry immigration process does not create barriers for international students like Raman. On behalf of the NDP caucus, I want to congratulate Andrew and Raman. Congratulations as well to Ali Zahir from Sheridan College and Sky Wati from University of Waterloo, who also received Ontario Co-op Student of the Year awards from Education at Work Ontario. The excellence and achievements demonstrated by these four young people shows how co-op programs benefit students and the Ontario economy. I hope all members of this legislature will support my private member's bill protecting interns and creating a learning economy act that will expand co-op programs in this province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Kingston in the island. Mr. Speaker, as I stand here today with something I really must say, I hope you're listening at the back, and I hope you don't mind I share it in rhyme, for it's about a sage man called Levac. For over 10 years and five, you've worked in this sphere as MPP for the riding of Brandt. But for the last few, you had much more to do as the speaker with power to end rants. The speaker, you'll know, is not just for show. He presides over all in this house. With the Guardian here, the debate rules are clear, defined well beyond any doubts. In most recent days, debate's been ablaze with the same points ever repeated. Your response has been just, you're holding our trust, though discussions are oft overheated. Alas, here we are, spring break now seems afar, how we long for a changed conversation. But no, it's more, I stand, you sit, twice warned, and that's it, instead of our new legislation. Legislative change is much needed, demands for order, not always heeded. I, yet, I listen, yet shake my head in awe. Teacher and principal at heart, your compassion and patience, true art, how the daily antics here surely must gnaw. So let it be known, 
while insults are thrown, that we truly respect what you do to the citizens of Brant, I direct my rant for this House's heart. Hear, hear. Thank you. <laughs> Because I heard some heckling, I want to hear it again. <laughs> Sorry, member statement, member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> this past weekend, I was pleased to celebrate Paddy Fest in Listowel. Paddy Fest is a two week long Irish festival organized by the Kid Clubs of Listowel. Now in its 38th year, it is one of North America's biggest Irish festivals. Paddy Fest is packed with events, including concerts, sporting tournaments, and family fun activities. I spent Saturday morning flipping pancakes at the Paddy Fest pancake breakfast and taking part in the Paddy Fest parade, which brings the whole community out. I would like to thank the Kinsmen and Connect Clubs of Listville for their hard work organizing yet another successful Paddy Fest. I would also like to recognize Melissa Dunphy, this year's Paddy Fest ambassador. Mm. There was a great turnout at this year's Paddy Fest, and proceeds will be going towards community projects, including the Steve Kerr Memorial Complex. We hope the province will join us in supporting this project. Again, thank you to the organizers, the volunteers, and the sponsors who contributed to Paddy Fest, and thank you to the North Perth community for coming together to enjoy this year's festival. Thank you, Speaker. Good job. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Brantley Gormal. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to commemorate three freedom fighters who opposed British oppression in India and fought for the independence of India. In fact, uh, those three individuals are Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev Thapar, and Shiv Ram Raj Guru. This is uh, March 23, 1931, is what's recognized as March of Day. They fought for an independent place, an independent uh, country. They fought for a place which would respect human rights, which would respect freedom, and would respect the dignity of life. However, it's ironic that three days earlier, March 20th in the year 2000, there was uh, very heinous massacres that occurred in India and which were perpetrated ostensibly by the Indian government itself. This is not the type of India that these three brave souls gave their life to defend. These are not, this is not the India that these brave souls fought for independence for. Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev Thapar, and Shiv Ram Rajguru fought for a free and independent country, not a country which is responsible for mass human rights violations, particularly what happened in Jatispura massacre, which is connected with the Pratibal killings as well as the uh, Parakobara killings as well. Um, Bhagat Singh stated, and it's a very strong and powerful quote, it is easy to kill individuals, but you cannot kill the ideas. Great empires crumbled while, their ide while the ideas survived. In memory of Bhagat Singh, let us hope that we can move towards a society where all can live in freedom and injustice. Thank you. Member Sims, the member from Barry. Thank you, Speaker. During Constituency Week, I had the pleasure of touring and making a funding announcement uh, at the clubhouse at the Canadian Mental Health Association, Simcoe County. The CMHA Simcoe County branch is a non-profit charitable association funded by the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care through the Local Health Integration Network. Funding is also provided by the United Way and the Ministry of Children and Youth Services. Founded in 1960, Barry Mental Health provided the city of Barry with its first psychiatrist. This agency also provided community education, advocacy, and volunteers to go to the Oak Ridge facility in Penetanguishene. CMHA Barry Simcoe continued to grow, offering a full range of services, including case management, employment opportunities, a social recreational clubhouse, and housing services. In 2010, CMHA Simcoe amalgamated with Simcoe Outreach Services. When new clients arrive, they are welcomed by greeter cats Daisy and Lily, wow. led by Lynn Ramondi and Lori Howcroft through the RSV program at the clubhouse. Clients are then provided with recreational, social, vocational, and peer support. I am pleased to recognize the dedicated staff and volunteers for all the invaluable work that they do for our community. Thank you. 
Thank you, Member Stavich, and the member for Prince Edward Hastings. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, our friends from the Anatolian Heritage Foundation have come to Queen's Park to host their annual friendship reception in support of Turkic Canadian solidarity and cultural heritage, and we welcome them. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our friends and thank members from the communities for their many contributions to the multicultural fabric of our province. The Anatolian Heritage Federation is a not-for-profit organization that represents Turkic communities right across Ontario. On this special occasion, I'd like to inform you that the Ontario PC Caucus will be co-sponsoring a bill to proclaim one week of March every year as Turkic Heritage Week in Ontario in order to remember and share cultural heritage and educate future generations about the inspirational role that Turkic Canadians have played and continue to play in communities in Ontario. The Turkic Heritage Week shall occur during the third or fourth week of March, whichever includes the 21st day, and that's the day we mark uh, the first day of spring and promote values of peace and solidarity between generations and within families. On behalf of the Ontario PC Caucus, I'd like to wish members of the Anatolian Heritage Federation and all attendees of today's friendship reception a very happy and successful event. I strongly believe that with the help of all of our colleagues here in the Ontario Legislature, the proposed bill will become a law, and I'm confident that one year from now, we'll all celebrate Turkic Heritage Week for the first time in the history of our province of Ontario. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We welcome our guests, and uh, it's now time for member statements. The member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to tell you about on St. Patrick's Day, where I hosted not hoisted, hosted my first community skate at the East York Memorial Arena in Beaches East York. Constituents of all ages came out to enjoy hot chocolate and cookies provided by the local McDonald's, and they received a Toronto Maple Leafs program uh, by MLSE and took in the dulcet sounds of New Orleans jazz performed live by our constituent Patrick Tevlin and his band, The Happy Pals. The kids wasted no time to lace up, show their moves, and play games of tags. Dozens of families from Crescent Town, Main Square, Palmer Court, and the Seacourt communities came out to participate. And parents and kids alike were very appreciative, many saying this was the best part of March break. Now I'd like to thank Tazneem Sharifi of the Thorncliffe Park Youth Centre for providing us with four hockey bags filled with skates and helmets. Because, many of the, because of their generous donation, many kids for the very first time had an opportunity to come out and skate. And I remember one little girl, Alicia, it was her first time on skates and she could barely stand up, but she was absolutely determined to make it around the rink. And about a half hour later, there she was, with a little help from friends and family, standing there with this big smile on her face, and you could see that her mother was equally proud. So, I, Mr. Speaker, a big thanks to my staff, the volunteers and the companies that helped put on this event, and for all those who came out. I look forward to an even bigger and better event next year. Uh, it's been a, just a tremendous opportunity to enjoy the community's activity. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stamos, the member from Ottawa South. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, I rise today in recognition of the incredible work being done at the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Centre, also known as the OBWC, located in my riding of Ottawa South. During this month, I was uh, pleased to attend the centre's first birthday party, and it was a wonderful celebration. The centre was the first of its kind in Ontario and is an important pa partner in child and maternal health, and we're very fortunate to have it lo located in the heart of our community. Over the past year, the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Centre has provided 450 mums and their families with more options for natural childbirth in an environment that is safe and respectful. They have become known for their responsiveness and professionalism and are regarded as insightful leaders in our community. My father used to say that each time we welcome a birth of a new baby, it means a little more hope for the world. Mon père disait toujours My father always said that every time a baby is born, this meant that there's new hope for the entire world. Congratulations to everyone at the Ottawa Birth and Wellness Centre on your one-year anniversary, and thank you for bringing a little more hope into our world. Merci. Merci. Thank you very much. Thank all members for their statements. It's now time for reports by.